folks and welcome to your next semi exciting Tesla update. Uh, we're back here in the workshop and be before I begin uh, let me apologize because one of my neighbors has bought himself a motorcycle and he now thinks that he's Steve McQueen. So he's now out there practicing the old jump over the barbed wire fence. So. Sorry about that, but uh, we're just going to have to ignore it for now and hope that he gets himself an electric motorcycle. All right, now, what we've got here is, I'm going to show you in a minute, we've got the Tesla inver inverter back out and we've wired it back up to the Tesla motor. So let's go have a look. All right, so Tesla inverter. Um, Connected up with some completely inadequate uh, wiring uh, to the Tesla motor. Uh, motor itself is as we've seen before. And so what we're doing is we're basically powering the uh, DC bus from my crazy battery charger type thing. Um, the the uh, 12 volts is too high right now because this power supply is goosed. Um, don't oh, okay. Don't, don't. Fix, fix, stay. All right now. So yeah, made up a wiring loom. So we've got our throttle pedal, our E46 Hall Effect throttle pedal wired up. We have the Tesla motor um, encoder now connected in. We got two channels on the encoder wired into our inverter. This is the first time that this particular inverter has ever worked with a two channel encoder, so woohoo. Uh, we got various signals here, so I've got forward uh, connected at the minute, we've got brake signal and so on, CAN bus, all that here. Start switch um, and all that. So got my multimeter there just measuring the phase currents um, unfortunately because I'm using this stupid FTDI adapter here because as I explained in the last video uh, the wires that I would assigned in the amp seal connector for my RS232 turned out to have a capacitor connected across them so I can't use RS232 up through the wiring loom as I had planned so we're going to have to change that pin assignment uh, <coughs> in our next uh, revision of the PCB. Now one of the things that I do want to do here uh, I wonder the main reason that I haven't just bolted the inverter straight back in is I want to calibrate the current sensors and in order to do that I need to be able to get my clamp meter around the cables and uh, that's just not physically possible uh, the way the the uh, Tesla uh, drive unit goes together. So basically, uh, we're going to do a little bit of a run here. It's not going to be much. You're just going to see the, mo the, mo the motor spin uh, responding to the throttle. The reason I'm not going to do too much or to go up to higher voltages at this, at this point is that the Tesla inverter has got very little thermal mass. Um, you know, it's, there's not much aluminium in there for the transistors to dissipate heat into. It very much relies on the liquid cooling. So I don't want to stress it um, when I'm not cooling it. Um, so when we start, you know, when we get the next rev of the PCB, and we start putting some serious power through this, it will be bolted up and we'll set up a, ta a tank here a little pump and we will just circulate coolant the motor probably really doesn't need it because it's not going to be on load per se it's just going to be spinning the the drive shafts uh, but the inverter i would be just nervous about it getting too warm uh, particularly given that i don't have the temperature sensors calibrated yet all right so enough about me talking uh, i'm going to set up the camera here and we'll just do a few little uh, throttle control runs just to show you guys the thing working and 
yeah I just show you that we've got closed loop control um, with the first rev of our open source logic board uh, working away there and see the little light flashing away on it everything's connected up and uh, yeah all right let's do it Alrighty, uh, so my multimeter always wants to turn itself off, which is probably not a bad thing because I tend to forget to turn them off. Uh, so okay, yeah, very straightforward. It's going to hit the start switch, and uh, basically we start uh, generating. At that stage, we generate a basically a zero PWM. So you may be able to hear the um, you may be able to hear. A little bit of an 8 kilohertz whine because we're currently set to 8.8 kilohertz. I'll sit myself down here, try not to get tangled up, and we'll just ease on the throttle a little bit. There we go. I've got the frequency set to a maximum of 50 hertz, um, so it's 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 only going to run. The motor up to 1500 revs, not like the 500 hertz that we had uh, on our last run here with the bench inverter, but we can speed up a little bit. Now we run out of uh, voltage pretty quickly here because we've only got about 40 volts going into the DC bus. But well, there it is, I mean I can throttle open. I don't have regen enabled at the minute because I'm not using a battery, there'd be nowhere for the regen currents to go. So we're not regening. I still have that turned off. Because if we were regening we could keep the bus voltage up very high when we don't have somewhere for that uh, power to go back in. Voltage around now, I'd say. Alright, um, okay, I know that was supposed to be the end of the video, but it's not. It's not. Um, <sighs> Alright, now, remember when I said that. This was the first time we were using the two encoder ch en 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 the encoder channels from the motor. Well, the hardware is there, but I hadn't set the little option on the um, on the configuration for two encoder channels. Let's go have a look at it with the two encoder channels working. This will be or not. Alright, now, so, okay. Two encoder channels are now set on the front end. Observe the uh, motor throttle coming on. This thing is butter smooth. And I can ramp it. Oh, yeah. That is the material I'm talking about. Okay, that's better. That's much better. Give it some, Mr. Musk. close up of this. Time for a close up on the rod or in this case drive shaft.
Yeah, Elon is just loving the two and polar channels. Oh crap! I didn't set it to 50 hertz, I set it to 200 hertz. Really, Damien? I mean, seriously? are better than one and also paying attention to the settings on your inverter parameters is better than not paying attention to the inverter parameters all right so really this time uh, we will see you in the next episode where I've had some more sleep uh, and we'll run the motor again and do more things with the like we'll be you know the the thing that makes it go faster and with the the batteries and you know like the voltage and all that electric -y stuff you know i don't know anything about that right so see you in the next video uh i nearly said forget to subscribe and leave a like don't forget to subscribe and leave a a, a, a like a like and we'll see you next time. Happy dual encoder channel motoring.